Hey y'all, I am Montana and I am here to show you exactly how to fill out those behind the wheel logs that you need for your certificate. You need two logs for your behind the wheel instruction. One is that 14 hour behind the wheel instruction log and the second one is the 30 hour behind the wheel practice log. If you don't have those logs currently on hand and you don't know where to find them, no worries, we got you. Just check the link in the description to print out those logs individually, or you can find blank copies of those logs at the end of the pre-DPS trip guide that we emailed you in your license certificate email. I'm gonna show you how to fill out your two behind the wheel aceable logs. This is gonna be the 14 hour in-car observation and behind the wheel instruction log, and this 30 hour behind the wheel practice log. These logs can definitely look intimidating, but don't worry, you've got this. First, it is important to note that none of the dates on either of these two logs should overlap with dates on any other log, and only one hour of driving instruction or practice may be logged in one day. So you'll need 14 unique dates on the behind the wheel instruction log, and 30 unique dates on the behind the wheel practice log. Let's start by walking through this 14 hour in car observation and behind the wheel instruction log. There's two blanks at the top of the form. You'll enter the student's legal name here, and here you'll enter the student's permit number, also referred to as their learner's license number. Remember, since these logs are for actual driving times, all dates must be on or after the date the student earned their permit. You can see that the log is separated by skill topic and broken up into a period of observation and practice. In-car observation is the time the student spends watching the eligible instructor perform the skill in the vehicle, and the behind-the-wheel practice is the time the student spends practicing the skill behind the wheel with the instructor observing. We have already filled the duration of time that each of these sections should take. Like these first two rows, you can enter the same date to total one hour of time. The time is just the actual time of day the instruction began. It's also totally okay to estimate the date and time if you didn't log as you go and you don't remember exactly. It's just important that it looks right at the DPS. Once you've gotten all the dates down, your eligible instructor will sign off on each row with their name and the driver license number. This is the same person who signed the classroom instruction log. Once it's all signed, the log is complete. So here, let's see if we can fill it out together. Now that we've filled out this full form, I want you to pay attention. It's okay for these times of day to really be any time of day. You're just gonna wanna start with the time that you actually did the practice. And now this slide is complete. It's time to move on to the 30 hour behind the wheel practice log. Once again, each row needs to have a different date to show one hour of practice under the particular skill practice session. On that date, you'll also enter the time the instruction began. Then to log the individual hour, You'll place a one under daytime hour or nighttime hour column, depending on the time of day you began. The DPS wants to see that you've completed at least 10 hours at night. Night is defined as any time after sunset, so in the winter time, night can be after 5 p.m., but in the summertime, night usually falls after 8 p.m. So for this first row, let's say Ace did one hour of driving practice at 3 p.m on February 10th. Then I'm gonna put a one under the daytime hour and not anything under that nighttime hour column. Then for the second row, on to 11, Ace did one hour of driving at 9 p.m. So that'll go for one nighttime hour. You're going to continue down the full log just like this putting different dates here, recording the time of day that that date started, and then recording a one under daytime or one under nighttime with, again, the ones under this column totaling at least 10 hours. It's okay if you did more than 10 hours at night, but you do need at least 10 hours to be recorded there. At the end of the log, you'll have recorded 30 different dates. Once all the dates are down, have the people who completed the student's hours sign off in this column. These hours can be completed with any adult over the age of 21 who does have a license in Texas, including but not limited to the parent instructor. So let's say I did the first practice hour with ACE.
but then Ace's aunt did the second hour. So I signed off here, but I'm gonna go get Ace's aunt to sign off on this column. And then at the very bottom of this form, you're gonna wanna have the eligible instructor sign off that the form is correct. And you'll put the date that that eligible instructor is signing off, which should line up with the very last date you're gonna fill in on this log. Now we are ready to fill this one out. Now that this log is filled out, we can see we have 30 different dates all along this log. It's okay that they're not in consecutive order, even though some of these dates are. They can be scattered all over the place, so long as they are different dates and they do not overlap with dates on any other log. These times I've written P for PM or A for AM, and then made sure I logged a 1 in the daytime hour or a 1 in the nighttime hour. Now I'm going to want to make sure I get every individual who did drive with ACE to sign off on ACE's practice. Then once I've gotten that all signed off, I will go ahead and sign at the bottom since I'm the eligible instructor. And then I'm gonna write the date, which once again is gonna coincide with this very last date on this log. And now this log is complete.